I mean. So don't think you're safe. I'm going to go there. All right, so welcome. I wanted to ask again, who is this their first ever live event with Sensi? I love that. Okay, so I first want to toss out a challenge. You're going to hear lots of, oh, that's annoying. <laughs> You're going to hear lots of things and lots of ideas, and some of them are going to hit you and you go, oh, I can't do that. Um, so one of those ideas that hit you like that, take it home with you, do it anyway. Do it anyway, because guess what? That's the idea that may just work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, you tried it, you failed, check. It's checked off your list, and you go, that didn't work so well, but we'll talk about a little more about that fun a little later. <laughs> Um, so I'm Courtney Edwards. I am a star director from Kittery Point. Uh, I started in 2009, so 13 years with Sensi. And at the time when I started, I had four teenage boys living in my house, a husband, a house. I was in graduate school, had a full-time job, a part-time job, and an internship, and I still signed up for Sensi. <laughs> uh, that is not a badge of courage, that's just plain, I needed girl time. I needed girl time and vacation money, two things everybody needs, right? Uh, and when I graduated from graduate school, I then made it to director in three months, so that was, <laughs> it took me a while, I was slow and steady, I was like, I'm writing a thesis, I have to get that done first. And that was a little crazy making. But now, my whole situation has changed. I am an empty nester, I am happily divorced, <laughs> Those of you who know, I might have been the biggest yellers there. Um, but silly me, I also got a dog. In the fall. Yeah, I was like, I don't know whose idea this was. It wasn't a really good one. But, so I also now have a house. Nobody to do the hard lifting except me. Um, a dog. She's a very cute golden retriever puppy. Um, and as I said, empty nester. And my I have three sons, so you know they don't. I have no minions. I have no minions. <laughs> so I sometimes go one woman show. I get things done, and I have to do my own heavy lifting. So my time is uh, pretty well scheduled out. And I think I've already gone through like three characters that I haven't paid attention. <laughs> It's hard because the light's in front of me. I love you, Courtney! Thank you. <laughs> so hold on, I want to make sure I cover all the details. So one of the things in the big picture for me, with Sensi, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to stay on top of and if you don't stay on top of it, it can eat you up. So I'm a big believer in checking my workstation daily, morning, and sometimes at night, um, because things do change. And I try to stay on top of it, but I also ask a teeny to also be on top of it for me and post it in my Facebook groups, because we are independent. It is not my job to hold my teeny's hands, and I would be crazy making the thing that I could do all of that for my team or my group. Um, and the big picture can be overwhelming. How many of you <laughs> have ever heard an upline or somebody else say, work your business, and you're like, are you speaking in code? Am I missing something? What, what does that mean? Right? Anybody else have that experience? Just me. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the few hands. I feel better now. <laughs> um, but working your business is making the schedules. Interacting with people is probably the biggest thing you, you need to do in, the, in this business. And who else thinks working with people can be scary? <laughs> I love people! Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but making that first phone call. Some, I get totally worked up in what I should say in my head. Anybody else? Write down the script. Write down the script until it's natural. Like, it, 
that's one of the biggest things. I think it was actually Patty Lynch one time. I was having a panic attack. I don't know what to say. And she's like, I just say yes. And I was like, and I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid to reach out to other people. Everybody else has the same conversations. They may have their perfect spin. So that's how you find what works for you, is tapping into the resources and the mentors that you have around you. Um, so, who is really good at consistency? Yeah. <laughs> I see some hands. Uh, speak with me later, please. <laughs> I need all the notes. Okay, so that's, who has some good consistency tips? We have people with microphones who can help and do running. Who has some good consistency tips? Not a hand, you all. Come on. <laughs> in the end, you have to have some good consistency tips. Um, okay, so I wrote a couple. Uh, how many people think we sell a really good product? Every oh, hand yeah. should be able to. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so doesn't that help you be consistent? Like, I use this product on a daily basis. How many of you use only Sensi Clean? Counter Clean? Oh, all purpose clean. All of it. How many people posted a picture of themselves using Counter Clean this week? Yes. That's, it. That's how you do it, right? That is how it's done. But being consistent is actually one of the best tools that you have in your toolbox. Being consistent. If people don't know you sell Sensi, because you did that one post. Hey, I joined Sensi. I did a thing. <laughs> yeah. Keep doing it. Because they don't know you're still doing it if you haven't posted in a while. I. Hello, people do that, right? Like, yeah. So we have to keep doing the thing. So message to your team to keep doing the thing. Um, and people, when you are consistent, when you post to social media, when you talk Sensi, when you have fun with Sensi, when you're saying, hey, it's been a while since we've had a party, it must be time. Then they know you're still in business, and they know you take your business seriously and will have their back. If people don't think you will have their back, like I message one of my friends, pumpkin roll, going away, okay. Like, if they don't know that you will have their back when their favorite scent is available or goes away, they'll, they'll pick up the consultant who will. So, remember, it's not, it's not bothering people. Some of you have that mentality. Boop, boop. Put that out to the universe, get it out of your head. Because when the grocery store sends you a flyer and you don't seem to mind, you don't go, oh my God, Hannaford is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I, I don't, I like to know what's on sale. Um, so sometimes you have to put it in your mindset, like you are providing customer service. What people want from us is customer service. So do that. Another thing that I thought about in the big picture is what are your habits? So what are some habits that you have that work? Anybody? Habits? Anytime Sensi makes a delivery to my house, I do a live opening it up. Fantastic. Uh, she said anytime she has a delivery that comes to her house, she goes live and she's opening it up. Same. Anybody else have other habits that are really, really fun and work for them? Okay, here, here. <laughs> A scent circle in every order. And do you stickerize that scent circle? Perfect, so she said she writes a note on the cardboard part of the scent circle and then puts a sticker of uh, new coming scents. Anybody else? Back here. Back there. Daily tracking of my number. Oh, daily tracking, yes. Muy bien. 
<laughs> Anybody else have some good habits that we need? Sounds really silly, but I actually post Sensi over the years on TikTok because I have like eight million different buddies in my house. I've been doing Sensi for ten years, so it's it's actually made people gravitate towards me and ask. What Hold the TikTok. Order? I'm this too old. <laughs> It's another technology. <laughs> um, so she said she posts to TikTok and she's been doing Sensi for 10 years. Shout out. Um, don't forget to go to SFR so you can do the walk. Um, and she, so she's become known for having Sensi buddies. So that's the other thing. If you get known as that person, people are more likely to follow you and see what you're talking about. Um, and I also really, really highly recommend James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, because there are things that you can do with habits that are not big, big stones. They are the little stones that once you put them in place, they help your, your big stones in your day. So one of the things, um, Steffi Marlboro did a chat on this, um, blocking your time. I know every day, well, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5, my time is booked. I know Wednesday night I go get burger with friends. I know um, Sunday is my local cocos day and I go get groceries. So there are big immovable stones that you have in your calendars that if you block your time, I'm one of those crazy people, I prefer the school year calendar to a January to December calendar. It just works for my brain. I, again, I have three sons things like that work. So one of my habits is a date book. I am old school. If I write it down, I remember. If I write it down, I then actually don't have to look at my date book because then it goes to my memory. Um, and so every night, I check my date book for what I have the next day. Every night, I data dump into my list. This, this holds the to-do list. This to-do list applies to all aspects of my life. December's to-do lists are much more considerable than February to-do lists. But I write down everything I need to do. I data dump from my brain at night so I can sleep. Otherwise, I lay in bed and go, oh, I have to do this, and I have to do this. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yep, Overthinkers United, we're meeting later. Um, but those are some habits that I do that save my brain space. And that's, James Clear talks about that and how simple habits can save you so much time. So it's well worth the read. I listened to the book um, on Audible, and it was much easier to take. And he did speak at SFR. He was very dry until he started talking about his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody remember that? Like he was like, this, this is good intel, but he was very tense in front of a group of women. <laughs> quotes of the year, the past two years. Last year's quote that I just, mantra, there we go, I kept saying it to, to my whole family, is healthy relationships have boundaries. And that applies to Sensi too. You, you do need boundaries with customers, you need boundaries with teammates, you need just healthy relationships have boundaries. And if someone's not okay with your boundaries, that's on them and not on you. So, Healthy relationships have boundaries, important to remember. And one of the things I see happening a lot is with LTOs and things like that, we get very worked up if someone misses something. It's a warmer. <laughs> They'll be okay, because someone will be selling it in a, in a sales group later. Take, take a breath. It, it's really not crisis. We have some people who are doing real work in crisis and, and like, Set the tone for your people. I don't know if I can get this. It may sell out before I get there. They'll be okay. It's, it's not a, 
Don't let someone else's urgency become your emergency because that's just too much. So uh, the other thing is this year's is we have to get more comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. So, and that circles back to what I talked about, having a mentor. Hold on. This is a big one. So, a good mentor will tell you the truth in a way that also wraps you in a hug. And it may not be easy. It may not be easy to hear, and it most likely isn't easy to say. Your goal, your job is to be present, have a conversation, and for gosh sakes, don't take it personally. They aren't there to hurt you. They are trying to make you better. <laughs> I had, I have a, a job mentor. He is not related to Sensi whatsoever. He barely knows what I do. He does, he did just say the other day to me, why wouldn't someone want to do what you do? I'm like, right? <laughs> but in 2020, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, <laughs> he's a great mentor, though. Um, in 2020, when I first met him, we were talking about my job and how I was feeling really stuck. And uh, here's on this moment, this star director had 10 people on her team. That's not lasting long. And I knew it. And I knew I needed people. Um, and so what I did was I set the goal to earn um, annual mentor for the next year. It was April. I had to be realistic. I was doing 14 people in a month. So I said, okay, now I have to get brave. But he called me out on my stuff. I said, I am doing all this and it's just not working. And he's like, if you were doing it, you wouldn't be where you are. <sighs> Tears. Thankfully, I'm on the phone. Let me let me get my tissues. This isn't bothering me at all. But guess what? I got better. And within a year, I had 50 on my team. I earned annual sales and annual mentor for my, the first time in my Sensi career. So, sometimes hearing those hard things gets you where you want to go. So pick your mentors wisely and have lots of conversations with people who inspire you. Watch podcasts that inspire you. They don't all have to be sensitive. We're smart people, but there are other smart people out there that talk the same business talk that we do. So mentor yourself up. Um, and yeah, remember, boundaries, uncomfortable conversations, be comfortable having them, because that's where the growth happens. Oh, and one of the biggest gifts, and yet for some of you, will be a biggest challenge. Self-reflection. Um, I was talking to Timmy Nicole, and I said, you know, the self-reflection thing is a constant. But some of you might use self-reflection to beat yourselves up. Cut that out right now. Because, okay, you had a party that flopped. How many of you had a party flop since the start of the year? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah? See? Party flop. Yes? How many of you with the party that flopped never heard from the host again? Even during the party. Oh. <laughs> right? It happens to all of us. And if you take that personally, if you take that as you have done something wrong, nope. But reflect on it. What could I have done differently needs to be your question, not what did I do wrong. And if you have an event, even if it's a successful event, take a step back and go, okay, what would I do differently next time? What could make that experience better for the people that came through the booth? Or what would that be? How would I do that differently for the party? Uh, the best party, one of the best parties I ever did, I at one point was throwing cotton balls at the people, <laughs> asking them, what was the best way to get their wax, the wax out of their warmers? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm throwing them at you. <laughs> <laughs> it was before the cotton clean ups in my defense. But, like, have fun with Sensi. How many of you think Sensi is, like, your Sensi time is the most fun you have in, a, in any given week? Right? 
this is fun. This, <laughs> I mean, one of my favorite lines is, I like to make your friends smell better. <laughs> <laughs> Icebreaker. Um, so, self, do self-reflection. But don't beat yourself up if something goes wrong, because chances are, other people are having that same exact experience and it wasn't you to begin with. So, yeah, there's that. And I actually heard this in my day job the other day. I was pretty impressed because it came out from a, came from a man who I wasn't really sure got the big picture. And he, he was talking about how many of you are challenged to be perfect? Oh, you won't raise your hand. Oh, because <laughs> we all try to be perfect at something, right? We all try too hard and get up in our heads and we're like, <sighs> um, but he said, sometimes perfect is the enemy of good. And we were talking about social media strategy and I was like, yes, light bulb, because Sometimes we don't post because we don't think it's good enough, right? It's not, I'm not saying this quite the right way, I don't have quite the right words. But then you post it anyway and you get 64 comments and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so don't let the need to be just right get in the way of things either. Because in the big picture, it, it'll be okay. So I want to also talk about a few of the tools I use other than my date book and my, like I don't leave home without these. These go in the big purse. I have them with me always. Or most of the time, sometimes I'm so naked and I'm like, oh, good director. <laughs> good director I am. But if you want, like, tools, one of my favorites is the monthly, uh, I was like, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sensi Gods, for creating that. Uh, and the Power Hour. If you have never seen this, go find it in the tools in the training center because this, this is the steps. I always watch Orville's 2012 um, SFR talk. If you haven't watched it, please do. Because he talks about the four chords, which are, anybody? Recruiting, parties, uh -oh, uh, Self-development. What's the fourth one? Anyone? I'm stuck. I have I have it on like it's above like my computer screen's here. It sits on a corkboard behind my computer screen. I Sales. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. PR. Yeah. Yes. PRV. So it is really a good talk. He talks in that one about the campfire, and there's always room here. And the big picture is since he becomes family, if you let it. You have to be able to let it in. When I started Cincy, I was like, I've done another sales company. I know what I'm doing, I'm good. <laughs> yep, I was okay. But when I started opening myself up to, to being mentored, to connecting with others, my business grew. So that, I will leave you with that. Go, go find yourself mentors, be part of the Sensi family. To be part of a tribe, you have to be present for the tribe as well. Don't expect your tribe to find you, go find your tribe. So, I will leave you with that. Enjoy the rest of the day, and remember your challenge. The one thing that makes you uncomfortable, I want you to go try it. Thank you.